What's up guys? In this video, we're going to deploy a React application on AWS S3 and have it connect to a Nest.js and Postgres backend. Let's take a look at what we're going to deploy. So here we have a very simple front end project with React and TypeScript. It's just a basic to do with uh, the basic CRUD operations. So you can see all as it is, it's just a to-do form. And in the to-do form, you can see there's just an input field and a button. And that's just going to call a callback function, which will add the to-do. So the add to-do function here is just a post request to the back end. And then we also have the to-do list. And that's where we're going to show all of the to-dos. And we're also going to have a callback to update the to and delete the to-do. And of course, they're just calls to the back end. So that's the React application that we're going to deploy to S3. We'll just take a quick look at the Nest.js application. We just made a couple of tweaks here. All we've done here is we've just enabled calls here. So we can make requests from different uh, URL locations to which the server's located on. In the app controller, we've just extended it so we can have the put and delete methods here. So it's all pretty basic stuff. This is just a CRUD application. So we build that and then we just run this command here. So I've just SSH'd into the ECT server, uh, EC2 server. And of course, I've just used PM2 as the process manager to run Node.js. Let's take a look at S3. So what is S3? Amazon S3 is a versatile AWS service used for various storage needs, including storing media files, backup and archiving. And what we'll be using it for will be hosting a website so you can host static files such as a React front end. So S3, it organizes objects. So they call them objects, they're just files. They organize objects into folders or what they call buckets. And they do that at the region level. So let's delve into when to use S3 or EFS for deploying a web application. So in essence, EFS shines in storing real-time dynamically generated files, while S3 excels at managing static assets. So let's consider a scenario where our web apps front end is packed with static assets you know, including videos, images, user profile pictures, things that don't change frequently. In such case, S3 is the ideal use case or service to choose because it's scalability for high read operations. It has a seamless integration with Amazon CloudFront CDN for global content delivery and it's cost effectiveness and versioning support for code updates. So if we just tweak our scenario, instead of static profile pictures, imagine dynamic user-generated graphs reflecting real-time stock prices or shared config files across EC2 instances. This is where EFS, EFS will outshine S3 because it has a shared file system offering better concurrency and locking mechanisms. It is optimal uh, for handling dynamic and frequently changing files. And it's ideal for collaborative environments and real-time data updates. How you know when to choose EFS or S3 for your storage needs? So EFS, it suits specific use cases like dynamic content generation and shared configurations. Whilst S3, it remains the go-to solution for most web application storage needs. So let's actually just go ahead and create a bucket. So we'll create a bucket and we'll create it in the region where I'm in. So I'm just in the Asia Pacific region. So I'll choose AP Southeast 2. And then I'm just going to go give this a name. This needs to be a unique name. So I'm just going to call this React JP S2. I'm going to say ACL is disabled and that's recommended. So if you just read here, ACL is the access control list. And basically, if you click that, it just means that the files, or you can read here basically, all objects in this bucket are owned by this account. 
So we're just going to use that setting there. If you're going to do something more complicated and have different ownerships by different users, you would have to look into the ACL option there. So what we're doing is we're deploying a React application and we don't need to block all public access because we want everyone to have access to our React application. So anyone can go on the website and check out our front end. So we just need to click this button here to acknowledge that those current settings are all well and good. So basically we're creating a folder or a bucket and we're allowing access to, for everyone to read that. Now you don't have to do that. And in fact, you can do it, you can set it up so that you have a private bucket, but then you use CloudFront and then CloudFront can interact quite easily with the S3, such that your S3 stuff's private, but then CloudFront shows it and caches it and as it's a CDN uh, at different edge networks. But we'll, we'll look at that in the next video. We will just want to start off nice and steady by just checking out how we can actually create an S3 bucket and host our React application on there. Bucket versioning, you can enable, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you're having a production environment, you probably would enable it and I might just go ahead and enable it. All that does is essentially, let's say you build your React files and you bundle them up and you host them on S3, but then you make some changes to your code and then you re-upload your static files, it will just show like a history of your previous versions and that, and that could be quite handy. So you have that. So I'm not going to put any tags here. So I'm just going to use the default encryption settings here and that will be pretty much it for me. So I'll just go ahead and I'll create the bucket here. So that's already been created. And if I go ahead and I click on the button on the bucket here, we can go ahead and we can upload some files here. In the front end, you can run a npm run build and they'll build your React files. So we can see in the front end here, we have this build folder here. So this will just take a moment because React, the compiler is optimizing. So that's actually already done. But now we can see that we have our files here. So let's go ahead and just upload those. And we can add the files here. So I'm going to add all of the static files. And then I'll also have to go ahead and just add the static folder there. So I'll click on that and then I'll upload that. And I'll click yes. And that's all we need to do. So we can upload the files here. So we can just scroll back up to the top and click close here. And we can see that we have our different files there. So we can see we have this static folder here as well. If we click on that, we'll have our subfolders and these files within those subfolders. So if we can just essentially go back to our bucket here. And one thing we want to do is we want to add a permission policy. So we go to permissions. And we can go to the bucket policy here and we can edit those. And what we want to do is we want to add a new statement. And if we just search for S3, we'll see an available S3 policy that we can just select. And what we want to allow is get object. So we can see that the access level is read and get object is sort of self-explanatory. It allows the people to interact with that and get the particular file from the bucket and add a resource. And the resource type is going to be an object or a file. And what we want to do here is we want to point towards the particular bucket we've created. So right now we've only created one, but if you imagine you might have multiple buckets on your server or on your S3, so you can just say, okay, well, we have the bucket, whatever you called it. So mine's called React JP test two. And then what we can do is we can just do a slash star. So that just means everyone will have read access to all of the objects within that bucket. 
and I'll just go ahead and add that resource there. Then finally, in the principle here, we got an empty object. I'm just going to let everyone read that. So we'll just say all star. And then you can see your JSON policy here. You have got your statement here. We've got the principle that we've just typed in then. We've got the effect, which is allow. So we're allowing everybody to get an object from the S3 bucket in React JP test 2. So any file from there. We can go ahead and we can just save the changes. What we can do is if we look into properties and we scroll down to the bottom here, there's static website hosting. So what we can do is we can enable this and we want to point towards the index.html because if you look at the front end project here and you look at the build, you see that there's the index.html, that's the root or the starter point of the application. So we just want to refer to that and we don't need any other additional settings here. So we can just go ahead and save that. And what that will do is if we scroll down to the bottom here, we'll have a link. And if we click on that, it will take us to our application. And the cool thing about this is we got our React application hosted on S3, but it's talking to our EC2 server. I could type in here a to do. So if I want to say clean my teeth and add that to do, you can see that that's added there. And if I refresh the page, it's still there because it's in the Postgres database on the EC2 instance. I could do the same thing by clicking that. And also I could go ahead and delete that. So we can see that we got the full CRUD operations working. So that's what I really wanted to do in this video. So we discussed S3 and how to deploy static websites. And now you can see that you can hook up your front end. So you might have a React project or whatever front end you have. You can hook it up to your back end and your database. And that's essentially the basics of any web application needs. So I do want to go into a bit more detail in the next video about scaling up the groups. So let's say you need multiple EC2 instances, how you go about doing that. And then I also might touch on CloudFront, which is a CDN to cache your static files. And it does more than that as well. So we'll have a look at that in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.